All right, guys. So, you know, uh, I just tried to do a live a bunch of times, and man, I know, I know that I've been slacking. This video, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. I'm gonna tell you one of my best stories because I just feel like you guys deserve it because I've been slacking. And this one, you know, I'm I'm really in no condition to do a video right now, but um, I know you guys are fiending for like a good story. So this one's going to be more like a, the Mike Virgin story. It's going to be less comedy. Um, this is one of my best stories for sure. Uh, this is in the state prison series. And by the way, I have a fractured hand. Do you see that? It hurts so fucking bad. I'm like in so much pain. And then last night I tripped. Uh, it was peyote, by the way. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to do a whole video on that trip do a psychedelic series, you know, uh, I'm going to fast forward a bit. So, you know, just I, really, this is one of my best stories. And, you know, this is like what Jeff, Nick Stahl, Karina, everyone says this is one of my best. Um, and it's going to take a while to get there. So basically, I'm going to be doing this story for YouTube much later. But I want to tell you guys because I feel like you just need a really good story. So this is one of my best for sure. God damn it. Now I've hyped it up and fucking. Oh, by the way, guys, um, I Monte bought. I have one of these left. So I got this is the penthouse that did the feature of me. Uh, f the best from XCon to bestseller. I'm selling these in a package of surprises for 100 bucks signed. One of these is going to Monte. Someone bought another one, hundred bucks. Um, and we sent the painting out. Uh, we sent the paintings out. I know that Travis and Alexis, Tedford, you got it. Uh, Tedford, I just got home. Do the tracking for the other one. Uh, so anyway, here we go. We're going into um, this story. Really, it's one of my best. So let's fast forward. Um, a lot of stuff happened uh, with the assault. It got dropped. And I'll get into all of that stuff. But um, I went through Wasco. And this is when I went to Sentinella. This is my first day at Sentinella. And uh, I promise, you guys are in for some crazy shit right now. So, and, and I'm not saying that all of the stuff leading up to this is boring. I'm just saying that this is by far what you guys want. And this is like a good classic older story that's just fucking gnarly. So I go through Wasco and when I'm there, um, you know, you ask your counselor where you want to go. You put in what your preference is. And I wanted to go to San Luis Obispo. Now, technically I'm GP at this point, but I'm going to a mixed yard. And I left Sentinella from the hole. So I go to the hole and you see your counselor. I was in Wasco for three months. You get one phone call a month, but because I was in the hole, I didn't get any. So, I, um, you know, I didn't get to talk. To, I only got to talk to Karina once while I was there. Assault charge got dropped. And I asked to go to San Luis Obispo. Soledad is the second place. Now, I heard rumors. I had a celly and he was telling me that they're going to mix SMY and GP. I've explained SMY is protective custody, GP's general population. So obviously PC's like an enemy to general population because they're dropouts, rats, sex offenders, etc. People that rolled it up. GP's very strict on politics. Politics in California state prison are, are, are really, 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 really like strict, right? So I knew that I was going to be mixed with protective custody. And basically, if you're active, you have to, as soon as you get to um, Sentinella, as soon as you hit a mixed yard, you have to get off within 72 hours. Meaning like right off, when, right when you get off the bus, you see someone that's at some Y, you have to take off on them. You have to take off on them and then you have to go to the hole and you, you have to catch a shoot term and you have to catch a battery, which is another year. So I already knew that I was going to go PC when I got there anyway. You know, I was trying like clinging on to the general population shit, but I knew that I was no good anyway from Victorville. And, you know, a lot of people won't be honest about all this stuff. I really don't care. I'm a solid guy. You know, I, I fight for prison reform, put money on my homies books that are still there. 
I'm a lot more solid than a lot of these GP guys, but technically I'm SNY now and like, it's okay. I'm okay with saying that, you know, it, it's okay. Um, it was hard to come to grips to, you know, for a while, it was like one of those things where it really hurt my ego, but I left Sentinella from the hole and I, I got ready to go. So I, they put me in this holding tank. So, you know, they wake you up. It's very uh, comparable to um, when you're getting transported in the feds. They put you in like holding tanks and you have to wait around and then you get on the bus. You know, you, you, you put handcuffs and shackles on. They put you on the bus and you go on a bus ride to whatever destination you're going to. So I knew that I was going to Sentinella because they give you a brown bag for your belongings and it says Sentinella on it. So I knew I was going there. Now, the reputation of Sentinella was very, very bad. Wes Watson just did a video and he said that Sentinella is the most violent prison in the system. I'd never hit a mainline, um, but I had heard really bad things about Sentinella. The reason that it's considered so bad is it's the White House. White House means that the hierarchy the people that are at the top, the MA, Mexican Mafia, California Brand, which is Aryan Brotherhood, the leaders are all at this prison. It's called the White House. So all of the calls that dictate what goes on in state prisons all happen from Sentinella, you know, mostly from the shoe there. But the it has the highest homicide rate, whatever. So they put me in, um, they put me in a holding tank and I meet this guy named Dirty turned out to be one of my best friends, white guy, right? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in there. I'm very scared. I haven't been around people for a while. I'm scared because I know that they're going to mix GP with PC. I'm going to have to get off on a PC if I want to can be considered GP. But I've already made it in my mind that I'm, I'm in a program. I'm going to go home. I want to get home to my girl. I want to get home to my kid. I don't give a fuck about prison politics. And the people that do aren't good fathers. So, you know, being solid to me is being a good dad. If you think differently that I'm a piece of shit, you're just a miserable fuck and you should stick a shampoo bottle up your ass and fuck yourself. And then squirt at the end. You're like, oh, you're a bitch. <clears throat> do math first, though, for sure. And it won't be pleasurable. So I'm in this holding tank. There's all these hardcore convicts in there, guys with face tattoos. They have like bars down their face. Like, oh. You know, the teardrop for murder. There's like some guy has like 20 teardrops. There's like a puddle. And some other guy has like a cock on his face. And I'm like, oh, yeah. So I'd start talking to this guy dirty. He's like, what's up, dog? I'm like, nothing. He's like, I'm dirty. I'm from Fresno. Uh, you know, I'm Ryan. I'm from Santa Barbara. All right, nice to meet you. No, I'm vicious. I'm from Santa Barbara. What's up, vicious? No, I'm Ryan. So me and him start talking and he's like, he's like, man, you ready for uh, Sentinella? You know, or he asked me where I was going because not everybody in the holding tank was, um, you know, going to that specific place. People are going to all different prisons. You know, you get in the bus and it goes to different places. So, I, he, you know, he asked me where I'm going. I'm at Sentinella. He's like, yeah, me too. He's like, you ready to go there? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, right when we get there, we're going to go to war with the GPs. What do you mean? He's like, yeah, man, we're going to go at it with, with the actives. And I see there's all these people, these hardened criminals in there. And I'm like, uh, are you, G are you SMY? He goes, yeah, aren't you? Dun, 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 dun. There's a fucking head. I'm like, wait, is this tank SMY? I'm looking at these guys. The most hardcore people you could, like, this guy has, like, a fucking dagger in his forehead. He's like, what up, fool? I got a knife fight. They never took it out. What up, bitch? It's like hardcore guys in there. I'm like, wait a second. So I'm... I'm PC? He's like, dude, everybody in this tank is PC. I was like, are you a child molester? He's like, dude, no. The fuck? I was like... He's like, and I wouldn't be saying that shit too loud, dude. If they, if these guys here, they're going to smash you out. What are you, GP? I was like, uh, I mean, I don't know. I was like, so everyone in your uh, PC? He's like, I don't know, man. I'm like, uh, I was like, well, why are you, uh, why are you PC? So he starts telling me the story and I've talked about this guy before. You know, when you're in a holding tank, you, you talk, you know, I mean, you, that's all you can do. I guess the sex ride could go off some meth hits. Everyone's like, dude, 
Are you feeling it? I'm fucking feeling it, dog. Take your shirt off. Oh, oh my God, dude, this feels good. You drink gay. You smoke gay. You're gay. So he starts telling me the story, right? So he was in this gang. I told you about him. Uh, the Fresnex. Solid motherfucker. Guy's done three terms. GP the whole time. He goes to jail. And his baby mama fucks a dude in the, in the gang. And gets pregnant. So he's like... You know, how's that going to fly? He, he he starts, he's just mad. So he, he, you know, and his gang doesn't have loyalty towards him, you know? Like, you would think that you're in a gang. I mean, what do gangs do? You know, they, the, the one of the point is that there's like a strong brotherhood or bond, or that's supposed to be the point. One of his brothers, one of these gang members, fucks his baby mama while he's in jail. Gang's not cool with it, or he's not cool with it. And he's not cool with the fact that the gang is okay with that happening. So he ends up getting in fights with other gang members. And he's like, you know what? Fuck you, fools. I'm out anyway. He starts getting smashed out every time he goes to jail. You know, he gets jumped by this gang. And Fresnex, they're no joke. They're no punks. You know, it's just like bakers. Like, these guys are, you know, these guys are with the business. I mean, these are like committed convicts. So he said he dropped out. And I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah. And my whole perception of SMY GP kind of started shifting anyway when I had gotten jumped in Santa Barbara County Jail, you know? And uh, so I'm like, so all these dudes are SMY? He's like, I don't know. He's like, I don't know because, you know, he's like, let's not talk about it. I mean, we're talking low. This guy's cool, you know? He's, to this day, I man, I fucking love this dude with all my heart. He's like, a, he's a brother to me. And like, I, I would do anything for him. That suck his dick. He's like, dude, I'm going to die unless you suck it. I'd be like, all right, fool, I love you. All right, anyway, I'm sorry with all the gay humor. It's really, it's too much. It's, 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 it's much too much. Come on, I'm coming. Oh, by the way, last night I ate peyote. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a long story. Didn't last that long, but I did eat it. But uh, anyway, we found out what it was. Damn, look at that hand. All right, so they put us on the bus. Now, when you're on a state prison bus... There's all the rows in the back, and then there's cages up front that are PC. We get on the bus. They put me in the PC cage with Dirty. So it's me, Dirty, a black guy named AZ, and two Southsiders. We're PC. The rest of the bus is general population. I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm like, what's going on? This is news to me, you know? I'm shackled. I'm sitting next to a lifer. Oh yeah, there's another there's another guy in there too. This uh, another white guy. He's a Norteño. I'm sitting next to him, he's a lifer, and he just got one an appeal, and he's getting out. You know, he'd been in prison for like thirty years or something, and he has face tattoos, the whole works. And he's talking to me. He's like, "What's up, man? I'm so and so." And I'm like, "Dude, why am I in the PC cage?" He's like, "You're PC. That's it. You're S and Y." He's like, "It doesn't matter, because where you're going, they're gonna mix all you guys anyway." And he's like, T "I'm telling you, bro." I, he, he'd been in the system for a long time. He's like, when the integration happens, everybody is, all these dudes that act like they're hardcore fucking convicts are going to drop out and they're going to just program with SMY because they have to. And so I start telling him kind of like what my situation was, how I'd gotten jumped in Santa Barbara County Jail. And he's like, right there, that's what made you PC, but you've just been by yourself for so long, you didn't know that there was like a difference. It, you know, in the populations doesn't matter anyway, because I'm going into integration now. And so I'm like, well, what do I do? He's like, man, he's like, people are getting murdered, you know, over the integration stuff. When we get off the bus right now, it's going to crack for sure. I look behind me. There's like, you know, there's like 50 convicts and they're like saying shit like, Hey, you piece of shit. You're not allowed to talk on the bus, but once in a while, you fucking piece of shit, I'm going to fucking stab you when we get off the bus fool. This is white guy saying this to me. I'm like, fuck dude i don't even think you know i never dropped out i never rolled it up what the fuck you know i'm like dude and you know there's cop with the go hey shut the fuck up and we're just like all right so we're sitting so i'm sitting in the cage and so I, i'm talking to this guy when i can get it off when the asshole fucking cop you know isn't talking or whatever and uh you know, I'm like, so what do we do? And he's telling me that, you know, this is, he had been in the riots in Chino. So when he got off the bus, 
150 man riot, people are getting butchered, stabbed, somebody got killed. Uh, same thing had happened at Norco. Should it happen at Pelican Bay? They try to mix. And, uh, and by the way, they classified me to go to a one yard, but you have to go to a three yard first in a process called orientation. So my heart just starts beating. I know that I'm about to be in a really, really bad situation. And by the way, when this video goes on YouTube, I'm going to break this all up, do it in cliffhangers, but I just feel like I really need to gift you guys something good because it's the end of the month and I've been slacking. Um, and I tried to do, oh man, I don't even want to go into it, but Anyway, my heart's beating fast. I know that I'm in a bad situation. This guy's telling me that the best thing to do is to run. You know, he's like, look, he's like, they might mix you in R&R. &R. They might not mix you until you guys get out of R&R &R when you're in the yard. He's like, but the best course of action is to run. Look how outnumbered you are. There's 50 of them. There's a good chance you're going to get killed right now. This guy, Dirty, I could already tell was a good guy. I mean, just energy wise, you know, I don't know. I'm a writer. I think I have pretty good intuition. I can read people pretty well. I think that's one of the attributes of being a writer is that you have that observational power where you kind of understand this guy's a good guy, this guy's a bad guy, just on like an intuitive energy level. And I just knew, I could just tell he was like a nice guy, you know? Um, and, and I really got to know him and I was right about it. So this trip is like probably like six, seven hours. Sentinella is right on the border of Mexico. It's probably like 15 minutes from Mexico. It's right on the border. It's in a town called Calexico. Um, or I don't know. There's a one. It's right by the border. Sentinella. It's like in the middle of this hellacious desert landscape, kind of like Victorville. So I can't sleep. I'm completely fueled by adrenaline because first of all, I didn't know that I was PC. Now I'm PC. I'm PC and I'm going into a straight up war where these 50 convicts want to kill me i have dirty i have these two south and this white guy this life i'm sitting next to the norteño he's going to a different prison he's going to what's the other prison down there uh is it chuckawalla no i think that's i don't know there's another prison i can't think of it right now but anyway so you know in my mind i'm coming up with a game plan i don't know what to do very long bus ride we stop like one time to use the restroom they keep us separated i'm hearing black guy, man when we get off this bus dog i'm gonna fucking take off on them fucking s and y pieces of shit dog ain't no fucking way i'm programming with them fool look at that. i'm gonna get that white boy he's kind of hot fool and then uh assessor's like yeah dog i'm gonna let that dude's ass fool and his friend's like hey don't say shit like that dog it makes us look bad fool you're a buster, dog. What's up? No, I just kidding. That didn't happen. But I could hear people talking shit. Very scary. Think about that. You basically have a target on you because these people automatically, I'm in this cage, so I'm the enemy to them. We we get to Sentinella. My heart be going the whole time. And we first they let us off. And, you know, the, the white guy had already been dropped off. So it's just dirty and nine. He's freaking out. He's sweating. It's this bald dude, shaved head. Really cool guy. Maybe I'll have him on the show. Probably will, because I think he should explain this particular story, because this shit's hardcore. They let us off first. We get off the bus, and the cops look at us, and they're like, welcome to a war zone. And we're like, what? He's like, you guys ready to fucking die? And Dirty's like, why is that? He's like, because the state doesn't know what they're doing. Welcome to your death sentence, boys. And he's like holding a gun, smiling very sadistically. Dirty looks at me. He's like, oh my God. He's like, hey man, are you mixing us with GP? He's like, yup. Get ready. Hope your daddy's taught you how to fight, boys. We're like, Jesus Christ, you know? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get more freaky than that. We go to r and r r and r is a bunch of different holding tanks. There's a big desk. They do a psychological, they do a medical evaluation, same kind of intake that they do at every prison, every fed prison that I've been to. So they put us in the, uh, in a cell. It's me, dirty, this black guy, Z, and these two Southsiders, these two Southsider dropouts, right? They're, they're not active anymore. Now I haven't been around SNY, but I've been to, um, you know, Oxford federal prison and there's a lot of sex offenders there, there are lots of rats. It's kind of like don't ask, don't tell. It's not a PCR. They don't have that really in the feds. It's just 
when you start getting in the Midwest and East Coast, it's less politically structured around people like that. So I had learned to do time with my blinders on, but like just PC, the connotation that goes with it, it was very like, like I'm dealing with like the shock of that. Like you put in this, all this time, this so-called career and all of a sudden I'm considered a dropout. I remember when I first started my channel, people were talking shit like, oh, can you believe that dropouts do channels? And I'm like, you know, thinking technically I'm SMY now, you know, like if I went back to jail, I'd PC up for sure, especially with the YouTube stuff. You know, I mean, I'm a father, man, you know, and that that is above all. I don't really care what anyone thinks. You know, my my, my mission in life is to be the best father I can be. I fucked up every other aspect of my life. I want to not fuck up that. I work hard. I hustle. I try to provide for him. Same thing with trying to stay alive because there's a good chance you'll die. It, you know, if I, if I went back to GP or tried to or whatever. So we're in this intake, we're thinking they're going to mix us and they don't, you know, the whole time we're all making plans, you know, the South Service are like, all right, like, you know, if, it, if there's about 50 of them, you know, there's what, dirty, AZ, me, there's like five of us, five against 50, nothing happens. And they keep us separated. Then they take us to the yard, right? So they're taking us to a three yard, SMY three. They're taking the GP there as well. So we both have to go on this three yard for orientation. Thing is, is so they put you in a housing unit, two man cells. It's an SMY three yard, but GP goes in there too, but we're locked in our cells. So we don't have access to the SMY guys. They let you out twice a day for breakfast and for dinner. And they let you out to shower once a week and make a phone call once a week if you're lucky, which you usually don't get. So they're just escorting us from R and R, like after we do our medical intake, all that stuff, they're escorting us in a line and you have to walk with your hands behind your back. So we're walking with our hands behind our back. And again, we don't know if they're going to mix us right there. So my heart's thudding, man. It's like coming out of my shirt, right? It's coming out of my shirt. No idea what I'm going into. It's like walking, it's like plunging into a rabbit hole in the unknown. And all of a sudden you hear fucking siren goes off, starts flashing. You see a spotlight. It was like in a movie. Get down. So we just get on our stomachs. They're like, stay down, stay down. And you hear ba, 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 ba. There's like percussion grenades going off and you hear screaming and yelling and you hear all this crazy shit. We're on our stomach. We can't see anything. Dirty's like, Jesus Christ, dude, I think they're mixing us right now. This goes on for about three or four minutes. The sounds, the sirens, dead silence. Boop. The only thing I can hear is my heart thudding. That's it. And when you're in that kind of adrenaline-fueled fear, you get tunnel vision. You know, you get tunnel vision and you can't really hear anything. Everything's almost wobbly, slow motion. And I'm on my stomach. And I'm freaking out, you know, they get us up, still don't mix us. They bring the five of us, the PC from the bus into this SMY three. Everybody's locked in their cell, right? Bring us in. There's like a little counter. It's like, um, you know, your typical double tier prison, which is like the standard layout for newer prisons, you know, stuff built in the last 20 or 30 years. So. Dirty and I are like, hey, can we sell up together? We're like, sure, no problem. You know, we got to choose to be together. So they put us, we're upstairs in, the, in, in you know, the, the last cell. We don't know what happened. We don't know why the siren went off, none of that. We get in the cell and it, it locks automatically. As soon as we get in there, you know, I'm like, damn, you know, we made it. Like, what's going to happen? I have no idea. We're kind of in the dark. A porter, which is an orderly. You know, somebody that mops the floors and everything. He's walking around up there. Then we see all the actives, the GPs come in, you know, and, and, you know, this is like pretty much my team and I'm not on it anymore. You know, I'm marked as a PC now. It's fun. It's very, very weird to even think about. So We see all the actives come in and, you know, of course they're looking at us like they get selled um, on the same range as the same tier. And every time they go through the cell, they're, they're mean mugging us. 
you know, they, they're, they're out, they're out for blood. You can see it. You can see these guys. These guys are like fucking wolves, man, licking their lips. They want us bad. They want to beat us up. And shit, if I was active, I'd probably, you know, I don't know, probably not. You know, I kind of made that resolve where I was done with that life. You know, I was just going to be a good father or whatever. Hi, honey, I love you. You're my baby. How much do you love me? I'm doing a video. What? You can't describe it in words? What about in sign language? What if love was a color? Oh, I love you the most, honey. All right, so anyway. Somebody starts talking to us through the vent, you know, and someone's like, hey, yo. And like, you know, someone's standing on their toilet talking up in the vent. It's a South Sider. They're like, hey, dog, uh, hey, are you fools active? Are you, or are you SNY? And Dirty's talking to him and Dirty's like, we're SNY. And he's like, hey, dog, so are we. He's like, hey, check it out, fool. They fucking mixed us tonight in the chow hall. He's like, we've been here for a month. They never mixed us. And they fucking mixed us tonight, dog. And it was fucking 25 on, on two. You know, there are only two of them. And so they start describing what had happened. So they had been there for a month. And they're saying that, that, they, that you know, they had never mixed them. And they went to chow. And all of a sudden, all the GP just came in. And, they, you know, a riot ensued. Not only were they attacked, but they also got written up for it. And one of them got their nose broken. And he said it was brutal and they got maced. And he's like, hey, uh, hey, fool, check it out. When the door's cracked, be ready. Make a piece. You know, he's telling us to make a knife. He's like, you guys know how to make a knife? And, you know, we're like, yeah. You know, I mean, in a, in a pinch, you can make one out of the bottom of a toothbrush or whatever. Um, you can also like melt soup packages and you can make one that way. I don't, I didn't know how to do that, but dirty was teaching me all this stuff. So he's like, Hey, just be strapped when the doors crack. It's, it's, it's on dog. He's like, there's two of us. There's five of you. So there's like seven versus about 60, you know, he's like, um, he's like, Hey man, they're, you know, they're, they're gunning for us dog. You know, uh, I'm with you to the wheels fall off my boy. It's all bad. All right, cool. You know, it's weird. Like. Now I'm like parent, you know, I'm like on the, the, the S and Y side, you know, which is fucking bizarre, really, if you really think about it. And what the irony is that most of these guys in the course of this story drop out and become S and Y anyway. So, you know, all this like huffing and puffing tough guy stuff, when it comes down to it, most people won't admit it. I'm just being honest and telling you the truth. I really don't give a fuck, but most people are going to lie about it. So then the porter, the guy that mops the uh, floors, you know, he was out there when the, uh, when they let the, the GP guys up, he comes by our cell. He's like, hey, man. His name was Chewy. Just like Taco. He's like, hey, man. Um, hey, um, I'm uh, I'm Chewy. God, my teeth are yellow. I just drank coffee. Uh, my name is uh, Chewy. And uh, I'm a PC. Are you guys PC or are you guys active? And like, I'm like, you know, I feel like an alcoholic, like afraid to admit it at an AA meeting. I'm like, uh, hi, I'm Ryan. I'm i'm sny oh god you know every time i say that my fucking vagina starts quivering you know uh and it was fucked up because i didn't choose to be it was just kind of like a forced decision you know because i got beat up at santa barbara county and i was gp in san bernardino i don't know man it's you know still to this day i know it doesn't matter but yeah i mean you know it affects your pride so this guy's telling us that the same thing that these outsiders said he's like hey they didn't mix for, they didn't mix for a month. He's like, this guy Chewy had juice with the cops. So he had like inside information. And he's like, they're going to mix you when the doors crack at 5 a.m. Just like what the Southsider said. And he's, he like, since he's a porter, he gets all the information. You know, he like other people hear stuff through the vents. Anyway, he's like, they're planning on, 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 on whacking you fools tomorrow, right when the doors crack. So just be prepared. We're like, okay, fuck, Jesus Christ, you know, this is, it was heavy. So Dirty and I get to know each other. We stay up talking. I actually tell him the Mike Virgin story the first night and like just me telling stories, him, him listening to stories. We kind of like get out of the, what's going on. I'm looking for my sunglasses. I can't find them. Where are they, Beth? Thank you, sweetie. Ooh, that looks bomb. Quesadilla? Thank you. Such a fucking bomb ass, Heimer. Bomb, you're so fucking bad. 
All right, so, um, okay, sorry. I was just, oh yeah, one last thing, my cigarettes. Okay, so the morning comes and the doors hadn't cracked yet. What happened is we tried to make a knife. We really didn't have the supplies, you know? Um, so what we did is they had, we had bars of sock, uh, bars of soap and we put them in our sock. We double, we put two socks and we put a few bars of soap in it so that we had at least a weapon and we were going to stuff that in our boxers and we were going to go to chow like that. The whole plan was to, um, like we were like, okay, we're going to go. So if there's 50 of them, you know, dirty's like, look, man, he's like, the cops are going to break it up, you know, real quick. We're probably going to get maced. He's like, so it might be like 10 seconds of us getting smashed, but there's like 60 of these actives. So it's like, you know, that could, we could get killed in that amount of time. I mean, 10 seconds is a long time when multiple people are kicking you in the fucking face. So our whole plan was to go stand against the, the wall so that nobody could attack us from the other direction and just start swinging our little sock soap weapon. And we're standing there. And I have no, I can't even articulate the level of anxiety that something like that is. I mean, if my heart was beating before, now it's really beating. I've never been in a situation even close to this. The worst fucking possible setup for a bad prison situation I'd ever been in. Newly considered SMY, 60 people against me. I have Dirty, I have these two Southsider dropouts from downstairs that are allies. And then I have these other two Southsiders and the black guy Z. This like toothless crackhead from Arizona, but he was cool. A nice enough guy, you know? Oh, and by the way, no sex offenders when they integrate. All the sex offenders go to private prison. So you're only dealing with like people that rolled it up over debts, people that got smashed out, which was me, and, uh, and rats, which is like, you know, I'm not cool with that, but uh, it is what it is, you know? So the doors finally crack. And seriously, it, it almost was like, felt like I shot Coke. That's the amount of adrenaline that just came soaring into my body. You know, like my whole body fucking fluttered with, um, you know, with anxiety and with adrenaline. Doors crack and we look out and I remember Dirty looked at me, he's like, all right, dog, I got, let's, let's do it, fool. I was like, all right, fuck it, you know? And we had to eat, we we're, we're starving. We didn't have any commissary or anything. So doors crack, we look below and we see two white guys. Or, I mean, two, two Southsiders. And they're the Southsiders that we had been talking to in the vent. And they look at us and they just nod. And then I see AZ, the black guy, he's our neighbor. He sticks his head out, he looks at us, he's like, damn, he's like, should we go? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, do you have a weapon? He's like, I put soap in a sock. I'm like, so did we. He's like, all right, let's go. And so we go down the stairs, we have our little weapons in our boxers or whatever. We go there, they have us put our hands behind our back. You know, there's, there's five of us and they start escorting us to chow. Now to get to chow, you leave this unit from the three yard, you walk through the yard and the chow halls on the left and there's two separate chow halls. You can't talk while you're being escorted, but you know, I mean, we still were. So we started going and the, the Southsiders that we had talked to, the Southsider dropouts are like, are like, hey, um, I don't know if they're gonna mix us. This is what they did last time. They let us out first and they brought us in the chow hall, so just be prepared. I'm like, all right. I mean, I can hardly even listen, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm in such bad anxiety, right? And so they bring us into the chow hall and we grab our tray. So you go through this little, like, it's like a metal bar. It kind of makes an L shape. You go like that and you, you turn this corner, you grab your tray, the kitchen workers are right there. You grab your tray and then you can go, uh, you go sit at a table and you can't, I mean, oh yeah, you can't. No, you have to sit with whoever you were in line with. You know, they try to do that to break up like the, you know, where it's like the chow hall is not like all divided by races like it would be in the Fed. So you, you sit with whoever you're in line with. So we basically all sit together, you know, uh, two Southsiders, me and Dirty, and then there's other Southsiders and, and, the, and the black dude AZs at the other table. So we start talking to them. Now we can talk freely. They're like, so we're like, so what happened? So they told us the story and they said that, you know, they hadn't been mixing them for a month. They went to chow and they were eating. And then all of a sudden about 25 GPs 
coming, right? And he said that right when they saw the GPs they were eating and they looked at them and they were like, fuck. And they were mad dogging them right when they came in the chow hall. Like they knew that it was gonna go down, you know? And you know, so they're mad dogging them. These guys go and get their trays. As Soon as they get the trays, 20 fucking five of them come and start attacking them. They get against the wall, the same thing that our plan was. And one of them got a broken nose. Other one got stomped out. One of them knocked out someone's teeth. And um, somebody had pulled out a knife. Someone had a shank and it like, I guess they tried to hit him and it fell or something because there were so many people. So they actually, it was like an attempted stabbing. There were about, he said like maybe 15, 20 cops in there expecting it to go down. And they had these like backpacks with, with, uh, with, with spray. Um, and they just started fucking macing them. They were wearing like oxygen masks. They sprayed them. This dude had a broken nose. And then they actually wrote them up for participating in a riot. So for defending yourself, you know, they were, they were losing six months of good time. So no matter what I was fucked, I was going to get hurt and I was going to lose good time. And there was nothing I could do about it. And I said, do you think that they're going to bring the Southsiders or do you think they're going to bring the actives in here? It's like, I don't know, man. They blindsided us last night. He's like, it was, he's like, just to be completely, <laughs> just to be completely honest with you, kind of, it was the scariest fucking night of my life, dog. He told me that. He said it was the scariest thing he's ever been through. And I felt the same way. So, I mean, I can't even enjoy my food. My, my stomach's upset. I'm thinking any second that door's going to open, the actives are going to come. And as soon as that happens, it's on. Straight up riot. It's going to kick off right there and then. We eat chow. I go, okay, guys, wrap it up. We go dump our trays, put our hands behind our back, walk back. They didn't do anything. And in state prison, when you go to breakfast, they give you a lunch bag when you're done. So they give me a lunch bag, right? And uh, so that's your lunch. And then they let you back out for dinner. So we go back to our cell. And I mean, we we felt elated. We, we felt almost high. It was like the flip side of adrenaline, right? Like this like relief, like a big weight coming off our shoulders. We're like... You know, God, we didn't die. Cool. They didn't mix us. So we start talking. I mean, of course, we still have the battle plan. Now, you know, Dirty didn't have a lot of money. And the reason he was in prison, he got a strike when he was younger for an armed robbery. And when you get a strike, when you, you know, everyone thinks that the three strikes law in California, strike means a felony. That's not true. A strike is like a violent crime. I've explained it before. It's a bartering chip for um, when you're signing your plea agreement. They'll give you a strike, but you have to do less time, you know, uh, on that term. But then any time that you get in trouble after that, it's exasperated by that first strike. So what he he had gotten four years at 85% because he got pulled over and gave the cop fake information. That would usually just be like a misdemeanor, falsifying information to a police officer. They gave him four years at 85%. He was going to serve three years on that, um, you know, which was like tragic. Now, we're going to a one yard and for the integration when you when pc and gp mix they take 33 percent off your sentence and nobody knew what that meant and i'll get into all this stuff on the videos leading up to this which are still interesting my time at wasco is pretty hardcore there was a riot with the bulldogs and all this shit but uh you know bulldogs are like a gang from fresno and it was pretty wild you know i saw people get stabbed and we'll get into this but this story is definitely gnarlier and i just thought you guys deserved it so um, you know, we, we, he's telling me that he doesn't have a lot of money, but he's a tattoo artist, you know? And so he, he had people putting money on his books and Wasco, they do pick and poke. I got that in Wasco when I was in the hole. I got my, my hand done as well. That is pick and poke. And so is that it's a sharpened staple that you dip in ink that you make. They start just going like this. It really hurts on your neck. It feels like someone's hitting your neck with a barbed syringe over and over again, like thousands of times. It fucking hurts. And so he made money doing that. He also had bought a wedding ring. You know, a lot of, you're allowed to have a wedding ring in prison. A lot of times people will pawn their wedding rings for drugs. And he had this badass ring that was worth like 500 bucks. And he's like, I'm going to sell this when I get to the one yard. And that's my whole plan. You know, he had tattooed or whatever um, and bought this wedding ring, I think for a hundred bucks. He's going to sell it for for 500 so we're making our game plan okay at dinner it might go down this is what we're gonna do same thing we're trying to figure out how to make a knife and when the porter chewy hey guys when chewy would come by be like hey chewy uh do you have any materials to make a piece he's like guys i don't do that 
you know, he's just a very, he was like a Jim Carrey, like, I think it was a chomo, because we're on a level three SNY yard. He looked like a chomo, right? When I say they don't put chomos, they don't mix them, the three was a straight SNY yard, but we didn't have any access to them, you know? So, you know, his name was Chewy, and Chewy goes, hey, look, man. He's like, hey, guys, look, man, there's going to be another bus tonight. You guys will probably get some more guys on the team. If you know what I mean. And we're like, hey, man, can you give us a shot of coffee? He's like, I don't do that. That was like his answer to everything. The fucking bitch, man. But he told us a, a new bus was coming. So he's like, and I'm like, well, I thought they were supposed to, I thought it was supposed to go down when the doors cracked today. He's like, nah, man. He's like, they're just gonna, they're, they're waiting a little bit because of the riot, you know, the night that you guys came. But they are going to do it eventually. Just be on your toes. Okay, cool. You know, at least we got to know these other Southsiders. One of them had a broken nose that had been in the riot. So that night, Dirty, you know, cops walk every hour. And Dirty's like, yo, CO. He's like, hey, man. He starts chopping it up with him, you know, and he's like, hey, um, are they going to mix us tonight with the actives? And the cop's like, nah, you guys are good. So he gives us the thumbs up. We're like, all right, cool. So that night, the doors crack. It's still the same adrenaline rush, but it's a little, um, you know, it's a little tempered because we had like inside information that it wasn't going to go down right so um we go to chow that night we're still looking around hands behind our back we go we talk to these guys cool done right we get back to the cell and we see the bus come in they bring about 40 people in and you know we're looking at them we're like oh man that guy's definitely us and why it's like some like tall ethiopian guy in a diaper that guy's PC for sure. There's like some like frail grandpa like guy with like a cane, you know? And there's some guy with like like you know that's like sucking his thumb while he's standing in line. I'm like, dude, all those dudes are SMY. We're good. So when they walk by, we're doing sign language, you know? We're asking them if they're SMY, if they're GP, and well, GP's like that. G I've never been good at that. GP. G, P, I suck it for time like this. G, P, G, P, G, P, G, P. And that's how you say it. I'll do, I, one day I'll do a video and explain that shit. Okay, so anyway, we start asking them in sign language. Hey, you guys G, P or you PC? Every single fucking person was G, P. So not only did we not get more people on our side, we got a bunch of gnarly looking people, except for the oath being in the diaper and the grandpa and the guy that was sucking on his thumb. I'm just kidding, but you know, guys that definitely didn't look like they were solid. They're like jello. I'm not solid. You know, they just didn't look like GP, but they were all GP. <sighs> Great. So cops walk in at night, right? And uh, we go, hey man, uh, are we cool in the morning? He's like, they're going to mix us in the morning. So that night we stay up, right? We had gotten a couple shots of coffee from, you know, some of the SMY guys would walk by, go to the shower. Hey man, we get a shot and they give us shots of coffee, all that, right? And me and him are talking. This guy's just super cool. He's a good friend of mine. I'll post a picture of him on here um, for any single ladies that uh, they want a hot tan guy that kind of looks like Bruce Willis, but, uh, you know, tweak or convict version, but still really good guy you know uh, if i had a sister i'd let him fuck her but i don't so he's fuckless okay so that night we don't sleep again we didn't really get any sleep since we'd been there because we were so nervous so by this time it had been a couple days with literally like no sleep so we feel twacked out even though we're not door opens we look they bring the pc dudes down I'm like, fuck it, let's go. We go to chow. Whole time tripping. Right? Go in the chow hall, looking around, tripping the whole time. They never bring anyone in. We get our lunch bag. Cool. That night at dinner, same thing happens. You know, we're tripping, we talk ourselves into it. Nothing happens. They don't mix us. The next day, now I asked the cop, you know, he's walking. We go, hey man, are we good? He goes, nah. And we're like, well, you said that. 
He's like, no, they're for real. I talked to the captain. They're going to mix you guys in the morning. He's like, get behind the GP so that you have a better vantage point. We're like, okay, cool. You know, it's, you don't want to go first, like what had happened to them. You want to go, you want to be the ones to walk in the chow hall while they're already in there because you're in a better position. If you're already in there and they come in, they can come at you from both sides. But if you come, if you're the second one and they run towards you, you can get a, a, up against a wall, take your sock out and start hitting them. So the morning comes. It's very scary because the all, you know, the doors crack. It's very loud. These magnetic doors clink open. And your heart just goes. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. You know, you're, you almost feel like you're nauseous. That's how much adrenaline is just like, you know, coursing through your body, right? Now, we see the people, we see the GPs, right? So there's about, I don't know, 25 of them. Let's just say 25. 25 of them all go down the stairs. They start escorting those guys to chow. We know for sure that we're being mixed because our door's open. So we know that it's going down for sure. And, you know, Terry's like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can go through with it, bro. He's like having kind of a panic attack. And hey, let me tell you something. This dude, Dirty, is a bad motherfucker. He's a tough guy. I've seen him knock people out. I've seen him do other crazy shit that I won't say, but he's with it. Let's just say that, right? I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I think we should just stay in. I'm like, you know what, man? We got to get it out of the way. You know, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. Let's just do it. <laughs> He's like, okay, bro. Okay. So we have our, our sock with the soap. We go down the stairs. So these two Southsiders, one of them's name's Weddo. He's like the short, like half white Southsider. Other Southsider, forget his name. Uh, the two Southsiders who came from, I forget their names. And then the black dude, AZ. So, you know, we go, um, we go with our hands behind our back. Let me see if I can, if I can have Karina film this because I need to show you guys something. So we, you know, we line up, we start walking. Now the 25 GPs are in front of us, right? They're in front of us and we're like a good, like, I don't know, 40 feet behind them. They're, they look behind them, but they're, they're not moving. Hey, baby, can you come down here for a second? What? Can you come here? Um, I need to, I'm, I'm filming. Can you do something? Freaking out. I know, baby, but just for a second. Well, All right. Well, that's more important than what I'm doing. I agree. Uh, okay. So she can't film right now, but I can try to explain this without her filming. Okay. So. We're watching the GPs watch. There's about 25 of them ahead of us, right? We're walking with our hands behind our back. And we didn't realize that there were more GPs. There's about 25 more of them. It's about 50 in total, right? So like every day people are getting moved to different yards. People are going to different places. Now there's about 50 GPs and we didn't realize it. For some reason, we thought that they were all ahead of us. Now there's 25 behind us. So we're completely sandwiched. And AZ, the black dude's like, he's like, oh my God, man. He's like, look, the actives are behind us. He's like, dude, I think they're gonna move on us. Now I look behind me and I see them. And, I, and let me try to film this. This, this was so fucking scary. So I'm watching, they're all Southsiders. Now there's like maybe four or five white guys. And I see them and they start going like this. So they're like holding their pants. God, I wish I could film this like show you like let me try to set it up so they're they're walking right and we have like these baggy jumpsuits on and they're like tiptoeing going like this with their pants you know like and they're smiling like they're doing that like puppeteer shit with their pants and they're smiling and they're walking slowly and they have this like demonic smile on them and AC's like, dude, I think they're going to move on us. I think they're going to move on us. Oh, shit, here they come. And they just start running as fast as they can towards us. 
So they're maybe 40 feet behind us. The other, the other actives are 40 feet ahead of us. So the actives in front of us, and they see that they're running towards us. Now they start running towards us too. So there's 25 people coming on one side, 25 people coming on the other. We're in the middle of the yard. We're on this three yard and we're just completely fucked, right? Now there's a few cops to the side. There's a few cops ahead and there's a few cops behind us. And they're like, stop. And now the sirens are going off. Now there's a guy in the, in the gun tower on the PA and he's like, he's, he's like, there will be no warning shots. And I'm seeing these South Siders run towards me from this side. I'm seeing all these actives run, run towards me from the other side. And I look in the middle of the yard and I'm like, all right, man, I'm just like the, the lifer told me that was getting out. I'm running away from these motherfuckers. So I start running as fast as I can to into the middle of the yard right to a cop like i'm literally like on the most bitch moment of my life i don't even care i'm not gonna let 50 fucking people come get me like that i run as and the cop's like hey what are you doing and he pulls out mace and he just starts spraying me and i'm like ah and i just like fuck. he's like get down and i'm like he's like spraying me I'm like what are you doing he's like get down I'm like, ah! and i like just drop on my stomach right i drop on my stomach and like my eyes are fucking singeing it feels like Tabasco just got dripped in my eyelids. I'm screaming in pain on my stomach. Ah! And I'm looking and I am watching the most brutal fucking riot I've ever seen in my life go down. So what ha I'm seeing the 25 actives. Now, AZ, he ran with me. Dirty was like, he was like, you know, started fighting the guys. Like he was like getting people off him, but he was running. He's like running and like fighting people. I like, I sprinted the fastest out of all of them. I got the furthest, but I got sprayed, but I can still see what's going on. 25 actives in front start attacking the 25 actives in back. They didn't realize who was who. They didn't know what was going on. They were just trying to get off the yard. A bunch of them had knives. So a bunch of people start getting stabbed, right? And then the guy in the gun tower starts firing off shots. So you're literally seeing, it's like being in the fucking war. There's like bullets like zinging everywhere. You're hearing shots. Sorry, everybody down. And you're seeing Southsiders stabbing the fuck at each other. And I see this guy, he's like standing on the wall, right? Like he has his back to the wall as a Southsider. He's not doing anything, right? He's just standing there. There's like Southsiders boxing, just going heads up right? There's people that are like, there's a bunch of people that are on their stomach. There's this guy standing um, on the wall. I see a guy, another South Sider go up to him and he pulls, he didn't have a shank out, but he fucking pulls one from like, I guess like his waistline or whatever. And it's, um, I don't know what it is. I guess it's like a, it's like a, um, I guess it's an ice pick, you know, it's like, a, it's like a straight knife, you know, it's like this, this is exact. Oh my God randomly this is right here it looks just like this so imagine this it looks just like that but with tape as a handle no idea where he got it so it's probably about that long and this guy standing against the wall and this guy just comes up to him and stabs him a bunch of times right here and blood's just literally squirting out like a horror movie and you know what's funny like you see horror movies and you see like blood squirt out, you see violence in movies and you're like, that looks fake. Fuck no, that's what it really looks like. Blood literally spurts out like, psh, psh, psh. like it looked like a, uh, like a, a geyser of blood just, you know, propelling out of his fucking neck. It was the craziest shit ever. Now you're seeing everybody's like, there's blood everywhere. Every, like this guy that's stabbing him has blood all over his face. Other people had gotten stabbed. You see Southsiders laying in a puddle of blood. You see um, the black guys and the white guys didn't do anything. Southsiders are just going fucking, you know, they're going crazy. And there's two guys standing. Cop in the gun tower still shooting at them. And both of them have knives. So it's like serious, like an old school knife fight. You know, they're just like kind of standing there with their knives. And like, you know, they're squaring up and, you know... Um, dude stabs the other guy in the leg. Guy falls down. Guy just starts fucking butchering his ass in the back. Cops are spraying both of them and they will not go down. This dude's stabbing him in the back, right? 
everybody's just covered in blood. My eyes are killing me. I'm like dying in pain from the mace. That's like the most direct spray that I'd ever had. I was like, I was coughing and like, it was like burning my throat. And then I just feel a knee on my back and it's, I don't know who it is. And I'm like, you know, I'm like freaked out. And then I feel myself get zip tied. It's a cop and I'm watching him. They're going around zip tying everybody. And they, they just like, so all of us are zip tied. It's kind of like the, um, the, the bulldog riot that I'll go into. Shit was wild too. That was in GP, fucking straight up riot with bulldogs. It was, that shit was out of control. But this story I think is, is a little gnarlier. So we all get zip tied. They bring us back to the, uh, you know, to the, to our cells. I'm dying. I'm like, the mace is just killing me. They won't let me take a shower, no milk to neutralize, nothing. I'm just laying there and I just take my clothes off. I'm butt naked, dirty. It's just like, do what you got to do. I'm like taking a bird bath. The water is like making the mace go down to my cock. It's burning my dick. It's burning my balls. It goes into my asshole, which kind of felt, you know, whatever. It was kind of Cancun-ish. And, and, you know, like, I'm like, oh my, I'm like looking at dirty. I'm like, dude, he's like, man, your eyes are so bloodshot. I'm like, yeah, man, fucking maced. And he's, I'm like, did you get any shots in? He's like, yeah. He's like, somebody tried to get me. I fucking hit him. He's like, dude, he's like almost in tears. And so am I like, we're so traumatized by this. I'm like, man, I was like, whew, we barely made it. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, but you know what? At least they're going to take those dudes off the yard. Like, it's all good. Like, you know, but you, like the bad apples probably got, you know, sifted out, whatever. About an hour later, they bring us all back lunches. And then you see all the Southsiders return, all the actives, except for the ones that got stabbed or the ones that stab. There are a bunch of people involved with the riots. And we're like, what the fuck? They brought them back. So Chewy comes out. I was like, hey, guys, how was the riot? How was the melee? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? You think this is a joke? He's like, I don't think it's a joke. He's like, I think you guys are fucking stupid for going to chow. I give you a soup if you want one. I was like, okay, can I have a seat? I don't do that. You fucking piece of shit. So we're, you know, he's telling us, I'm like, why are they bringing these fucking GPs back that were involved with the ride? He's like, oh, they have to get off twice to get off the yard. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, it's going to go down again. He's like, they make you do it twice to get off the yard. Are you kidding me? So like, you would think that it's over right there and then, but it wasn't. So... You know, the, oh my God, the May shit just came, like my eyes were killing me, stinging, singed as if you put a blowtorch up to it. So we kind of chill out after the bird bath. I'm trying to lay in my bunk, but like my skin feels like I got burned. You know, it's like, it's like the worst feeling. It literally feels like how after a burn does when like you blister up, but there's no blisters. It's like invisible, but it feels like that. So then dinner comes up, you know, and Dirty and I are talking like, I mean, I'm almost in tears. I'm so frightened. I write Karina a letter and I'm just like, honey, like, you know, please send me some money so I can go to commissary. You know, it's kind of bad for me right here. And you could get commissary, you know, while you're in orientation like that. See, in orientation, you go and you see the the board or a committee. You go see committee and it's like a group of people. It's like a parole board. They go over your shit, make sure you're not a sex offender. You don't have any active warrants because there's not fences on a one yard. It's like Camp Snoopy. But to get there, you have to be on this three yard and you have to go through hell. And you can be there for a week. You can be there for a year. It just depends how quick they are with the paperwork. You know, Dirty saw committee that day that the riot went down, but they didn't call me. And I was like, fuck, you know? So we're talking about like, we know that we have to go back to dinner, right? And so, and we know that we're going to get in a riot again. So, you know, we're like, all right, this is our game plan. You know, this time, you know, we, we gotta, we gotta, you know, we, we gotta attack them if they come anywhere near us. Like we need to stand our ground, you know, can't run away like we did last time, whatever. Okay. So we're going to do it. We're going to stand up against the wall, but we're going to attack them, you know, attack them, then wall. Like we came up with this whole strategy. So dinner comes and I start pussing out. I don't want to go. You know, I was kind of like how dirty was the first time. I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't really want to go. He's like, come on, man. Don't be like that. I'm like, dude, I don't even know how you can do it. He's like, we got this. So they end up letting us go first. You know, and there's some, they, they let some Southsiders out and 
you know, some of the actives. So I guess some of them went before us, whatever. But we go before the big groups. There's like seven, maybe 10 people in front of us. And we keep like a safe distance, you know. Then we see all the actives behind us. So we're walking on the yard again. My heart is thudding. I'm like, I'm terrified. This is like one of the most traumatic experiences of my entire fucking life. Seriously, this was so incredibly scary. I don't even know how to describe how scary it was. And like, you know, really, again, I, I don't, I really don't think for what I did, I deserved all this, but whatever, I was there. So that's really all that mattered was surviving at this point. So we get to Chow. Remember I told you it's an L. And what's scary about that is when you turn, you're in a blind corner away from cops. So we go and we see some some Southsiders getting their chow in front of us and they're looking at us, they're giving us a bad look. We already know that they're gonna attack us. Then when we're like in line to get our trays, a bunch of actives get behind us, a bunch of GP gets behind us. There's a bunch of skinheads, white skinheads. Now, I know peckerwoods really like aren't, you know, like a lot of them I heard were doing the integration and mixing. But I know skinheads aren't cool with it and they're going to attack white guys, you know? So we're like, fuck, man, you know? So we get our trays and we're looking at, there's active mad dog in us in front of us. These skinheads are mad dogging us behind us. We get our tray and then you just hear that familiar sound. Bah, 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 it's the, you know, the racquetball squeak sound of speakers just start, the whole fucking chow hall goes up in flames. You see people just fighting everywhere. Someone runs up and throws like their cup at someone's face. You know, it, 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 like, I think it knocked, I don't know if it knocked a tooth out, but blood starts coming out of the guy's mouth. You know, they're like, get on the ground. And so Dirty and I go and we get against the wall. Someone, a Southsider comes up and tries to attack us. I pull, I pull my sock out and I fucking hit him as hard as I can. It kind of hits him in the neck, so it, I missed. I was trying to get his face, but it hit him hard enough where he didn't like really realize what I had that I didn't have a weapon, and he kind of starts like you know juking a little bit. And the cops are like, "Down!" and we get and I get sprayed because I hit him. Now I look and and you know Dirty's hitting someone himself with the saw. He get he hits the guy right in the eye. Guy's face starts swelling. He hits a Southsider. We both were fighting with Southsiders. Skinheads are already on their ground. You know, they're on the ground, like maybe 20 feet from us and get on the ground. Now we get maced. So I got maced twice in one day. Right. So I'm maced. I'm like sitting there. My eyes are so puffy. I'm on my stomach. Right. And you're seeing all these people get taken away in zip ties. Now the captain comes and there's about 20 cops in there. I don't know if anyone got stabbed that time. I don't think so. You know, um, people were bloody or whatever. A lot of fighting. Someone got hit with that cup and his mouth was bleeding. I hit someone with, a, with my um, soap in the sock. Dirty hit someone. But I don't think anyone got stabbed. There's about 20 cops in there. He starts taking away like a few people. Doesn't take me though. You know, I mean, they saw me hit him with the thing. But cops are very racist. And these were white cops. And I think they like have favoritism towards white inmates. Anyway. Um, captain comes in, he's like, he's like, Hey, can you guys program together? I want to know right now, are you guys going to be cool? And everyone just is like, yeah, he's like, cause if you're going to be cool, you can eat your dinner. If not, you don't get shit. We're not giving you a bag lunch. What's up? Can you guys fucking be cool? And everyone's like kind of nodding, but I mean, come on. I don't trust that shit at all. So the cop, um, you know, the, the, the captain kind of like lets us all get back up and the skinhead looks at me and he's like, he's an older dude. His name is Jason. He's like, he's like, Hey, you got a fucking problem or what? You know, he's like kind of like a buff skinhead. And I'm like, I'm like, nah, man. And I was like, he's like, so you're not going to attack us. I'm like, nah, I thought you were going to attack me. He's like, nah, bro. I got a kid, man. I'm just trying to go home, bro. I was like, me too. He's like, all right, brother, nothing but love. It's all good. It's all good. Like, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not even like a dropout or anything. I don't even know why they got me and like categorized as SMY. He's like, it's all good, brother. I end up sitting at a table and eating with the skinheads. You know, it's like me dirty and two skinheads. And they're really, really nice to us. And they're just like, yeah, this shit's crazy. And they're like, and we understand that, you know, like there's, there's bad calls. People get fucked off, you know, and there's no sex offenders. It's like, are, are do you guys, did you guys cooperate or anything? And we're both like, no, I mean, we got our paperwork. 
He's like, cool. I was like, I'm going to shoot it to you. He's like, you guys need anything? Any soups? Any coffee? We're like, we need some coffee. He's like, I got you. I got you. Don't trip. What cell are you in? So it was cool talking to them. But then, you know, they caught, they were like, all right, guys, wrap it up. You know, uh, this table go. So we see Southsiders going behind us with their trays. And I mean, every time they, they walk behind me, I flinch a little bit. Right. And, um, and so, you know, chow wraps up. I feel a little better that, you know, because now some of the bad apples really are getting taken off the yard. And we already like established with the skinhead guys that, you know, everything was going to be cool. And that there was kind of like a truce amongst us. So I thought everything was going to get better and fucking boy, was I wrong. It was just starting. I got in 12 of these and this was not even close to the gnarliest shit. Way more hardcore riots happen. But I consider that one of my better stories for sure. Um, and this whole time period and, uh, and I'll keep posting today or I'll try to, I don't want to say shit and then not do it and be crucified, but Hey, I love you guys. Those of you guys that ride for me, I appreciate you all. Those of you that think that I'm not doing my part, don't sign up next month. All good. Um, you know, I, uh, I appreciate the people that really support me. I'm not going to run out of stories. I got plenty fucking more and, uh, I, I'm really going to make an effort to post more now. Uh, last night I wanted to, but you know what happened? I'm, I'm for sure going to do at least one more. I'll try to do one for each tier right now. Appreciate you. Palabra.